Also in the news tonight, word from Tehran that the militants have given up control of the hostages. Firefighters may finally be winning the battle in Southern California. Thousands march in San Francisco tonight to remember the men who were murdered two years ago today. And of course, today is Thanksgiving and we'll look at the celebrations all across the country. from Jack London Square. This is the 10 o'clock news. Winner of the 1980 Emmy Award for best newscast in Northern California. The Bay Area's most complete nighttime television report with the award-winning Channel 2 News Team and late satellite coverage from around the world. Some very uh, good news out of Los Angeles. Just one day after <laughs> surgical removal of his stomach for cancer. Uh, so I think I'll just sneak out of the national weather scene and come right back to California where our, ah, that bush is growing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, where was I? I'll have to look at my notes now. Yes, here in California. <laughs> Jeez. Investigators say they feel they are close to solving some of the murders. Barbara. The fire totally destroyed the house. Today, the wreckers pulled it down, representing 18 years of Pat Hicks's childhood. <laughs> Do it again. <laughs> Court says the FBI spent four years in, in investigations during J. Edgar Hoover's dictator, or rather, directorship. A jilted boyfriend who wanted to follow his high school sweetheart to college this week is under arrest tonight for her murder. Late last night, 18-year-old Stephen Burns confessed to the shooting of Katina Salerno last Monday night on the campus of the University of the Pacific. That confession came just minutes after the 10 o'clock news broadcast a story by reporter Elaine Chamos in which Katina's parents issued a public appeal for the killer to turn himself in. Today, Elaine talked to the Salerno family again. Your newscast came on at 10 o'clock, and within an hour, Steve had confessed to the crime. The parents of Katina Salarno say they don't know whether Steve Burns watched their appeal on the 10 o'clock news last night, but today they thanked us and the many people who offered them support. Republican presidential candidate Ronald Reagan and independent John Anderson met tonight in the first, possibly the only debate of the 1980 presidential campaign. From the first question, which dealt with the problem of inflation, both men attacked the man who wasn't there, President Jimmy Carter. Never drive it into the health lab. It's too hard to pull out. Well, we seem to be having a, a bit of a problem bringing you the debate. But it was a very interesting one on the subject of draft registration, which... Count him and give him five, four, insert Chiron, three, two, one, insert out, channel two, full. Drive it into the health lab. It's too hard to pull out. What the heck? Uh oh Ah, uh, shit. It's ready, camera three, and we got to dump out of this, Claude. Ready, camera three, and Claude's mic. It's on net. Take three, cue, Claude. And Sunday, the afternoon temperatures will cool off just a little bit. The clouds are gathering now, so, Barbara... Get your bumper shoot ready, and Dennis, get your rubbers ready. <laughs> As we mentioned tonight, the day after Thanksgiving, which just happens to be today. WJET-TV, Channel 24, Erie. Well, with one giant whoosh and a spume of sand, water, and natural gas, what may be the biggest natural gas well ever tapped in this area announced its presence over the weekend. Our, our brother died for us. So you're asking about retaliation. We're going to do whatever he would want us to do for him because he gave his life for us. And that's the most any man could give for anybody. And we all loved him. And uh, his sons are dead motherfuckers. Live from the Radel Funeral Home, I'm Fred Wymore, Eyewitness 12 on the scene. All of that shortly, but first, the morning news with Jess Marlowe, who's filling in for Floyd Calber. And good morning, Jess. Good morning, Jim. Thank you. Growing indications this morning that the Camp David Mindy Summit has reached the make or break stage. Bye. 
can't do it when you're sitting on it. I learned that from Gene Chalet. Well, Christine Hansen is out at the Sacramento Zoo today. And, uh, Christine, is it true? Is it all happening at the zoo? <laughs> not sure if anything's happening at the zoo. As soon as we get here, of course, everybody goes inside. But uh, I always like kind of being at the zoo at this kind of, uh, this time of the night anyway. The animals are, oh, there's someone behind me. Oh, you can you can hardly see the bears. They're going down. Anyway, they're very hungry tonight. So they're out and they're kind of um, stalking back and forth. But we um, we do have a few animals out. I went over to look at the giraffes. We had that new giraffe um, born just a week ago and he's kind of poking his head out, but we couldn't get a very good shot of him. So we have the very hungry bears behind me tonight, of course. Tonight begins the Jewish holiday of Hanukkah, the Festival of Lights. And standing by at his home, live with Instant Eye, is Rabbi Bradley Bleefeld of the Baltimore Hebrew Congregation with his family. And now they will light the first light of Hanukkah. Praised are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has kept us in life, sustained us, and permitted us to reach this joyous occasion. Amen. Rabbi Bleefeld, uh, this is Richard Scher. And uh, we'd like you to explain the significance of Hanukkah, if you would. This begins our eight-night festival of religious freedom. We commemorate the time over 2,000 years ago when a small group of Jews fought for their religious freedom against the Assyrians. This holiday commemorates that fight for freedom and indeed has a special meaning this year not only because my congregation is celebrating its 150th year in a festival of rededication, but because we of the Jewish community share in the concern for the hostages being held in Iran, for they too are suffering under a contemporary form of religious tyranny. Well, we certainly hope that all of those prayers are answered, and may, uh, may all of us here wish you uh, and all of your family a very happy holiday, uh, Rabbi. 